So I'm going to talk about the active cycle of breathing technique and go through the cycle. It is one of the most basic techniques that physiotherapists use to help people with sputum that they can't clear, often with people with lung disease. There are certain reasons not to do this technique, so please check with your healthcare professional physiotherapist first. Some of the things you need to do before you would do this technique is to make sure you've had your um, short-acting and long-acting bronchodilators if you've been prescribed those inhalers to try and relax the muscles in the airways so you're going to move the sputum out more easily but also to make sure you're well hydrated because if your sputum is thick and sticky and your airways are narrow and tight this probably isn't going to work so reverse the reversible hydrate and bronchodilate first the next thing you're going to do is make sure you're sat in a comfortable position. It's important to do this in sitting and you need to dedicate 10 minutes to this as often as your physiotherapist recommends during the day. But a good 10 minutes, you can't rush this, it's not going to work, you're going to make your airways tighter, the sputum isn't going to move. So a relaxed, quiet place where you can concentrate is important to get this done properly. And then it's done quicker and you can go and have a nice day without coughing and spluttering. So in a nice relaxed sitting position, you're going to place your hand ju just on your diaphragm, so below your ribs on the top of your tummy. And you're going to sit there for a few minutes and breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, nice and quietly. And you're aiming for that to be very quiet and very relaxed breathing. No movement of the upper chest, just your hand rising and falling as your diaphragm contracts and relaxes and draws air in and out of your lungs, which I will demonstrate now. So once you feel like you've got on top of the diaphragmatic breathing control, the next thing you're going to do is some deep breaths. The purpose of the deep breaths is to get the air behind the sputum. So often if the sputum's blocking some of the airways, you need to take that deep breath in really slowly and for quite a long period of time, and then hold it to allow the air to find detours around the roadblocks that the sputum's causing. We call this collateral ventilation. So the uh, air is finding an alternative route behind that sputum. If you just take a big deep breath in and out, you're not going to get the air behind the sputum, you're just going to be pushing the sputum in different uh, down into the lungs really and it's not going to be as effective. So just those little basic tips can really make a big difference here. So I'm going to take a deep breath in through my nose, I'm going to really concentrate on expanding at the bases of my lungs and expanding at the top at the end of my in-breath, not at the beginning. I'm then going to hold that in-breath for two to three seconds if you're able to and then relax that out. And I'm not going to repeat that until I've done some diaphragmatic breathing and got my breath back because actually I find if I try and do three or four of them in a row I get really dizzy and I get a bit breathless and I don't have a lung problem. So I tend to tell my patients to do one breathing control and repeat and up to four deep breaths. So I'm just going to catch my breath from talking too much and then repeat that. So deep breath in. Breathing control. And I'm going to repeat my deep breath. Breathing control. And another deep breath. Breathing control. And my last deep breath. And breathing control to just reduce that urge of breathlessness. Try and suppress your cough at this point if you can, unless the sputum is right at the top of the throat and then it should be cleared with one, maybe two coughs. You shouldn't be coughing more than twice, you need to do some cough control for that, which I will go through in another video. So breathing control, 
and then you repeat that cycle and you can do another four breaths until you feel like you've unstuck that sputum, that mucus, sufficiently to start the huffing phase of the active cycle of breathing. So nice and relaxed. Have a drink next to you, have some tissues ready for this sputum to come up. Hopefully I didn't have any up today. Okay, so next we're going to move on to the huff section. So the huff can be broken into two sections. Traditionally it was just a long hard huff which tends to clear the mucus from right in the trachea in the upper airways and it is a big breath in and a short sharp huff out with an open mouth. The huff is different from a cough. A cough is where the glottis closes over the airways so the glottis is a flap in your throat and it clamps down over the airway when you cough and that makes that <coughs> sound. When you huff you are aim you're aiming to keep the glottis open and to drag the mucus up and out through the glottis. So if I demonstrate a short, sharp huff, so a big breath in. <sighs> so I've really opened my mouth up, opened up the glottis and I'm forcing the air out. Imagine you're misting up your glasses or misting up a mirror. I'll just repeat that for you. and then a cough to clear. And then breathing control again. Always come back to that breathing control. You're in control of your breathing and take conscious control of that. If that's not sufficient to move the mucus, you might need to do a low, long huff, and that will move the mucus in the smaller peripheral airways down in the bases of your lungs. So if you can feel where the sputum is, and often patients can, then you can work on drawing it up from that area. And actually placing your hand over that area can help to focus you on breathing and filling that lung area. So I'm going to take a small breath in this time, but a longer, quieter huff out. And then you often need breathing control afterwards. What you should hear if there's mucus, and I think you could hear a tiny bit there on me, is the mucus moving. If the mucus is further down in the lungs, you will hear it moving at the end of your long huff out. And it will start to sound like crackling, um, almost like static from the old tellies back in the day. And that's the sound you want to hear. And as you move that mucus up with your, out, with your long huff, it will get louder as it gets higher up to the exit. And that's what you want to do is move that up. And you want to sweep and gather as much as possible. So when you do cough and you do exert that level of energy to cough, it's efficient and you clear a nice big bit of sputum in one go rather than cough, cough, cough all the time. So I'm just going to repeat that long, low huff. Now the mistake some people make with this and it's very easy to do when you've got a lung problem and you have wheezy airways, is to go too hard. Um, and then you get a wheeze, so... <laughs> so pushing too hard, and I can just feel this tightness and this wheeze here. So as I said earlier, you can prevent that with some bronchodilation, so your blue inhaler or, and your long-acting inhalers if you're prescribed them. But actually a way to control that is to do it more gently, so you're not contracting the muscles around the airways. So it's a nice, relaxed way to do it. And you need to use your stomach muscles to make sure that you really squeeze all that air out and you get into those lower lung volumes right down in the target areas at the bases of the lungs. Always come back to that breathing control, as I said. And if you're not successful, but you know there's mucus there, then you continue to repeat that cycle of breathing control deep breathing exercises, and then your short or your hard huff.